Hey, welcome to our first regular meeting upstairs in 2019, I think. Yep. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for coming out. As always, let's, let's start with our Pledge of Allegiance, if you don't mind. Rise. Say the pledge, John. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Staples here somewhere. There's Dwight. Congratulations. Welcome to the Heart of America. Keith yeah. Marquis, are you here? Keith? Keith, did you make it this weekend? Who wants to be Keith for a day? Not even here. Okay. It's my morning, y'all. We're all right. Together. Uh, new members. I know there's a couple, three new members at least here in the audience who haven't been sworn in. Well, stand up. If you've been sworn in, stand up, say hello, and don't mind what it's your hat. Sworn hat. Sworn hat. Ish. Main? What first you been? Nope. Then how come you came to the CF? Didn't we swear you in already? No. No? Okay. Just joined by a month ago. Good. And he's already been out to help. been sworn in, come on up front. I'll follow you, it could be a trap. And this month I have a lovely assistant to help me. You've been promoted, yet. Yeah. You know what, let me wind that off so you're not winding. Ed Toomey, for those that are new but have been sworn in, long time member, long time helper, and Later, like a officer, officer, the He's been a member for over 30 years. I've been here And he washes windows. The reason I'm up here is that I'm proud to present my grandson. Cool. Jacob is going to be solo on his uh, Cherokee uh, next week. Okay, gentlemen, if you'll raise your right hand, I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. I will contribute my time and talent. Working to obtain the objectives, objectives of the Commemorative Air Force. Working to obtain the objectives of the Commemorative Air Force. And by these actions, I will reflect credit upon this organization. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to my country. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to my country. Welcome to the wing. Introduce yourself, say hi. So, so, my name's Bob Wakefield, believe it or not, I've actually been a member for years. You don't know me, but I've been chained to a desk since 2017, so that's when I've been around. So. <laughs> I finally know this game, so uh, it's, uh, it's nice to be here and see all you people. <laughs> You've seen Bob out in the field with the CAP cadets. 
parking cars and unparking cars and covered to death. So you see me. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Joe Stubler. I joined when the virus happened, so I haven't been here since then. So. <laughs> You're up to date with everybody else. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jacob. Uh, growing up out here, like I said, my grandpa's been a member here for like 30 years, so I've grown up here since I was a kid. Been to every air show, and uh, yeah, I just started flight training, so hopefully we'll sell those soon. <laughs> my name is Robert Christensen, and I have lived in Kansas City now here three times. Um, moved here last year, retired, so uh, been an aviation enthusiast the whole time. Uh, since I was a kid. Um, I do have a private pilot's license, I've flown for a while. And I also have an AMP mechanics license. Oh, oh baby! Oh, 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 and we got a so I was growing up in the air force this year. Thanks to, thanks to Fred Wickey there that introduced me to the, to the organization. So far, it's been a lot of fun. Well, thank you all. Over, <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Announcement right here. If you'll notice, our carpet looks better than it has in quite some time. Well we had it cleaned so well that it's, it's lasted a year and a half now. <laughs> so <laughs> the carpet cleaning committee has asked, and staff has actually they, we talked about this. Uh, let's not have food up here. No coffee up here. Wrong right. And <laughs> but hey, we're trying to keep it as nice as we can for as long as we can. So we'll be eating downstairs, doing the donuts downstairs, and, and no colored liquids upstairs, please, or food. Um, speaking of announcements, Executive Officer, you want to give an announcement? We had open hangar day for the first time this year in a long time. Lots of people here came out and helped. We made over $2,000 in one day. The ones who were here, you want to stand up? Stand up. Stand up. There you go. Thank you. These guys came out here and made it happen. So I want to say thank you to those who did come and thank you for those that are going to come in August. Okay, for our next one. So that's all I gotta say. Thank you. Seriously, it was a phenomenal day. You know, over 300 visitors come out and, and look at the hangar and introduce themselves to CF and that allow us to introduce them to the community, us to the community. And it was a great job, Linda. Phenomenal success. One of the best open hangar days we've had in two years. So. <laughs> Speaking of volunteers, though, I would like everyone, I got kudos from the Airport Commission. We washed airplanes out in the Navy Park uh, last, last Saturday? Yep. Yes. Last Saturday. Uh, beautiful weather for it. Rick Schubert, wave your hand, Rick. He's been instrumental in all those things we're doing. And uh, Jim Neese, Jim Bond, and Rick loaned us their power washers. The Navy Sea Cadets, it's an auxiliary of the Navy League, they had a dozen kids out here, so they were tremendously helpful. It all went perfect, and I'd like to thank everybody that they came out and helped with that. Uh, moving towards the future, Marvin's Towing over in Gardner has offered to pick up uh, one of the planes. Is, they're all sitting on concrete pads. One of the concrete pads has come apart, so we need to pick the jet up and move it over. Marvin's Towing says if he can't donate it completely, he'll give us a huge discount doing that. And then Penny Concrete, I guess is the name of the company, out on the west side of the field, maybe we'll donate the new concrete for it. They had uh, different ideas about how to keep the jet from sinking into the dirt. So <laughs> more news to come on that one, but thanks to both of those companies in advance. Um, any other staff announcements? Anybody? 
Pops Finance. Do you want to cover the shows now or is it later on? Or how no, do you come on, cover okay. the shows. Um, another thing that's happening for the first time in months and months and months. By the way, this is Bob Robinson, our operations officer. For those yes. that don't know him. Yeah. There are going to be two huge, and I mean huge, air shows coming up in the next two weeks. If you can't hear, will you help with this? Take my mic. Yeah, because he lost his hearing. Uh, okay, there in the also for the first time in many many months, we're going to be involved in two enormous air shows. Uh, next Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Topeka is uh, at Forbes Field. We've been invited to go up there and sell rides if we can get our steering ready to do it. If not, some of the other members can have airplanes. We we can have a, a tent up there and advertise ourselves try to promote ourselves. Uh, it's going to be maybe a bigger show than what's forecast for the Kansas City Air Show the following July 3rd and 4th weekend. Um, what I'd like to get is a, like a piece of paper to, to we can pass around. If you want to participate in either one of these shows, we need to start providing names and a, your name and email address so that we can let them know and let you know and so that uh, ramp passes can be provided. Um, the, the show at Topeka, I just talked to uh, one of the organizers this morning and they need names so they can, uh, how many people will be there to, so they can get them passes to get in and out of the show. <sighs> I wish I had a better better news on the stair, but it's, it's, it may be ready to sell rides by next weekend, but I'm not holding my, you know, Hold my breath on that. Uh, the but other but we can't have a presence up there. We have our tent up there, and so if you enjoy sitting out on a 125 degree ramp in, in, the, the, shade. in the shade, <laughs> surrounded by the sweltering, you know, but the, uh, it, then your we'll pass on a piece of paper, put your name and your phone number and email address, and there will be there's going to be a lot happening in the next couple of days as far as if you want to participate in the show in Topeka. The following weekend is a show here in Kansas, uh, on our airport, across the way, and, we're, and I'm waiting to hear back from the guy that's the ramp boss. Uh, probably will be Monday before I get a hold of him, because his, all I've got is his office number. And uh, so we've got a little more time to organize on that. Again, we need names so they can provide uh, participant passes and, and so forth. We will be... Hopefully, selling rides at the Stearman when the waiver is over or before and over. Maybe on Friday before the show. Um, you've been around old airplanes long enough. You learn not to hurry up. And, you learn to hurry up and wait. It's you know, everything's a last-minute decision on some of these things. So, keeping our fingers crossed, we'll be able to sell rides to people. We'll be able to sell rides here in Kansas City after the show is over. And uh, but we will need because the heat's going to be tremendous. We will need people to volunteer work in shifts. I mean, it's, it's a lot to ask of somebody to sit there for 12 hours in the heat. It's, it's tough on you. But, so, anybody have any questions about any of those? That's what's coming up in the most immediate future. Over here, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed. How do you sign up? You uh, we'll pass a pass sheet of paper around and name, address, or na name, phone number, and email address, legibly, please. And, uh, and then I will, in the next... 48 hours, hopefully I'll be scurrying and, and all this information is going to be coming out. So I, uh, Brooks has sent me a, uh, an email just this morning with all the, de the details on Topeka. And uh, as Kansas City unfolds, we'll share it. It's not a whole lot to do except sit in the sun, and, sit in the shade and sweat. It's going to be hot. We'll have water out there for everybody, but there's, it's, uh, and you know, in the afternoon it'll be a, a great show to watch. I know they, they said in Topeka the show is going to start at 11.30 and run pretty much nonstop until 4.30. They're have, they have got a tremendous lineup of no Thunderbirds or Blue Angels, but they've got about everything else going to be going on. John, you had a question? I'm going to ask you, for those that are going over there, planning to go over there, is there a hotel that they want to stay? That, uh, <laughs> that's, if you want to stay, that's the... That's the uh, Anywhere in Topeka you can find a stay. I don't know, there's going to be a lot of people in town. I think, what's that big hotel that's down by the convention center? I, I can't think of the name of it. No place I can, if you want to stay in Topeka, you're on your own. 
for doing that. Crown Plaza, Capitol Plaza, that might be it. Uh, Forbes Field, is, if you don't know, is, is way south of town. I think there's a Super 8 that's just about a half a mile from the airport. It's, uh, you know, that's, I don't know if anybody's going to be staying there. That's, that's not a too bad a place to stay. But anywhere else in Topeka, it's fair game. So, uh, anyway, so if there's a... we got a sign-up sheet for the Kansas City Air Show. If you can help with Topeka, there's a line over here, put a check mark or just dash Topeka after your name. Uh, also, what Bob doesn't know, headquarters down in Dallas is sending up uh, the... The red tail people, the one supposed to be here, but also Ike's bird. Ike's bird, which is a twin commander Eisenhower used to go from DC to Camp David back in the 50s. Well, the CF got that, I think someone donated it to the CF. They're using it as a ride airplane now. They're going to bring it up to the Kansas City Air Show and they need some support for a ride desk and, and ground crew for that. So if you'd be interested in helping with the Ike's bird, put a little dash Ike next to your name. Uh, in addition to helping with our steermen and, and the red tail people are self-contained, so, I think so you know. But at the Kansas City Air Show so far, there's a B-17 coming from the Yanks Air Museum, a Ford Tri-Motor from I can't remember where, uh, Ikesburg, our steermen hopefully. The Missouri and wing. The Missouri wing is supposedly bringing the airplane. B-25 TBM and the oh, L-3. Oh, L3. Um, so it's going to be a, a, a great show and. If you're a volunteer, you're going to be parking over by the control tower. If you're a non-volunteer, you're going to be parking over by what used to be the Great Mall of the Americas that's running the bus. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so I will stand. When the first page fills out, fill out the back, and then we'll get some more paper later. So, Dave, would you start that around the room? Thank you very much. Any other questions? I'm going to say, uh, you go to the KC Air Show Air Site. They're, they're asking for volunteers to help work too, so. KansasCityAirShow.org. Yeah. They're looking for volunteers to just help with help, everything. Help, help with anything. Uh, yeah. Gate, security, uh, information booth, whatever. So, you want something else to do besides sit around airplane, airplanes? Under our shaded tent. Yeah. He'd rather stand out on the ramp volunteering for the general. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes, Jim. You might remind me, I was on the other phone in the back that uh, during the kids' air show, maybe we parked here in our hangar. That probably won't work because of the Blue Angels and the heavy. No, that is one thing. No. If you haven't heard, the, the waiver of the Blues are, this place is going to be sterilized. We're not going to be allowed to be in the hangar here. We can't park here. We can't do anything. In fact, anybody that's, that signs up as a volunteer for the Casey Air Show, you will be parking over by Spirit, is that? Well, just north of Spirit. Over. Yeah, somewhere over on that side of the airport. And you will have a, uh, a participants pass. That's why we need names, and so they can they're going to issue all these these passes. They may be transferable, you know. Maybe you know, and I expect this. If you come in the morning, you may not want to stay all day. If you you know, may want to just work the afternoon for your show. Imagine that. But uh, yeah, the whole parking will be over there. Why? Yes, sir. Uh, you know the cost on most of the people don't have volunteers. No idea. I think it's 35 bucks a head. I know they had a, for Kansas City or so. Yeah, Topeka's 25. 25, Topeka's yeah. 25. Kansas City had like five dollars off if you buy it early. But I think it's 35 bucks a head. It's, it's not cheap. Well, it's going to be a big show. Yes, sir? Really big show. Another question? But yes, this place will be evacuated. The whole east side of the airport is going to be evacuated. Sometime Friday and all weekend, the Sheriff's Department's going to close 159th Street and 56 Highway, and they're going to close uh, 151st and New Century Parkway, and then they're going to close it down by uh, the highway, 56 Highway down the other end. So you will not be able to get on this part of the airport unless you have a business pass. I asked them for at least a couple per day in case we have to come over here and get some oil for the steering or T-shirts or whatever. But if you come driving out thinking you're going to get to the airport from this side, not going to happen. They're it's going to not going to happen. If you can drive your own car out to the airport, go to the, where the Great Mall used to be, because they're not going to let anybody on the airport unless you've got a participant, a few pass, right. a car pass, and then you'll be parking on the opposite side of the airport. All these details as they come to, as they firm them up, again, if you have time to spare, do something that involves them in the air. And so all these details will be forthcoming. Uh, 
hopefully for the Casey Air Show by the first of next week. So, all right. And to flex your volunteer muscles and get in the mood, we have a an event rental tonight. The hangar's been rented out to somebody. They're having a party starting, I think, about 4 o'clock and running until I don't know when. Uh, after lunch, we'll need to clear the hangar out. So if anybody's got time to stand around and, or stay around after the meeting and help, we'll be moving some stuff over to my hangar, some stuff into the shop, and some of the airplanes out of the ramp. So, yes, sir. Uh, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but There you go. For those that didn't hear, Janet's not here today. I'm going to have a moment of silence because I like lunch. And uh, that's down there by herself working in the kitchen. So please help clean up after lunch. Uh, we're going to have to take some, we got most of our chairs up here because of the big crowd today, so we'll take, need to take most of our chairs downstairs just to eat lunch and then pick them up afterwards and pull the tables up. And thank you all ahead of time for helping. Uh, Nick, any, anything else operationalized, staff member, finance, questions, comments, complaints? Apparently we paid the electric bill because the lights are still on. Uh, da, 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 da. Elections. <clears throat> this fall, we're going to have elections for wing leader, executive officer, and operations. Those are the three offices that need to be filled. Uh, Linda has indicated she might be willing to serve on as XO for another term. Bob says probably not, but we could maybe twist his arm. <laughs> but wing leader is limited by the bylaws to two terms, and I've done my two terms. So I cannot run for re-election. We'll, we'll need a new wing leader this fall. If anybody has any interest in that whatsoever, or questions or comments about that, let me know. Or you can come to the next staff meeting. Um, we're not going to tell him first. We're just going to surprise him. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but before we get the candidates for the offices, we need a nominating committee. There's a committee of at least three people have to get together and choose potential candidates, ask them, vet those candidates if, if they agree to serve. So I have already asked uh, Chuck Haight, where's Chuck? He said he'd do it. Jim Hathcote said he'd probably be able to, but no commitment yet. I need at least a third person, and if we had four or five, that'd be great. I can't see in the dark. This is Jared. Oh, hey, Jared. I'll be on the nominating committee. Okay. If you're on the nominating committee, you cannot run for office or be elected, so they can't come kidnap you, I'm just saying. But there you go. We got Jared. We got Chuck. And Jim will do it. Thank you, Jim. That will be our nominating committee. If you're interested in any of those offices, uh, let me know or let them know. And hopefully in the future we'll get all that running. The election's not till November, but you got to send the candidates and everything down to headquarters and back wall. That takes a couple months to get ready. All righty. Anybody have any other questions, comments, complaints? Say what? Dance. Oh, dance committee. Have our dance October 16th. And uh, we had a meeting uh, last month that we pretty much uh, established a schedule for the dance and uh, how things are going to transpire. Uh, we will be selling tickets. And uh, I'm going to have to uh, coordinate some uh, printing and some artwork for those. So that'll happen at um, the end of this month. Tickets for the dance go on sale the end of August. Okay. When's the next committee meeting if someone wanted to come? It'll, 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 we don't have a date set, but it'll be next month. Okay. Sometime next month, look for an email announcement. We'll have a dance committee meeting if you want more information or, or volunteer to help out. And probably, on, okay. probably on a Tuesday. Probably on a Tuesday. You need to get hard so cheap. Yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Dyer. Yeah. Uh, can you see me? Can, I, can everybody see me down here? All right. Uh, stand up. Stand up. Uh, Debbie, would you mind assembling the family first? And just maybe bring them up here. And I'll let you be doing introductions. And then we have a special presentation before our Q&A lady today. 
And uh, so I'm going to let Debbie introduce the family. This is Burt Madison's family, two of his daughters. Yes, and Burt Madison, lots of, for those that don't know. And as you know, uh, Burt was a member of the wing. And I want you to introduce the family while I bring out what you're presenting. OK. Um, first, my son Christian Sims and his wife Stephanie, my daughter Margo Hurst, and my sister Connie Madison Walsh, and her daughter Bridget Porter, and her little, her granddaughter Kelly. And I don't know that I can uh, do this, uh, this uh, powerful story. So, this is a World War II bomber jacket. Her served on a, in a ball turret gunner on a B-24. This is hand painted. Bert was an artist, and he painted this to represent, as you see the bombs, each of these represented a mission that Bert served our country. And so the family, as part of their wishes, asked if the museum would keep this housed here. Would you give the family a warm So, I'm going to hand this to, can I hand this to you for a second? Because, uh, we, <laughs> I'm going to come back here for a second. We have some members of our wing that have some wonderful gifts. I'm sorry, I thought it was unattached. So, you can. Uh, if you look on the side of this uh, model, did you see on the side? So we have a professional modeler in our wing that made for the family, as I understand. Am I right? Yes. This is a gift to the family. Uh, this is a B-24, and so Bert would have served down under the bottom of this uh, plane, and it has the insignia. And uh, Darren couldn't be here today, but he wanted to, everybody really wanted to bless Bert and what he had done for our wing, and then I also want to present to each of the family. They um, have a special. Thank you, Brian. Can, can I hold that one up? If there, there's one for each of you. So this is Bert's trading card, and you can see uh, Bert there in the picture. Challenge coin, and and I'm. I want to do, and then Ron, did you have, did you, oh, okay, the, it, and Ron Wright built, and I think the poem is on there, yes. uh, the poem that was read at the eulogy is on the plaque in the museum, so I won't do that, and then last thing, and this to you, Max, would you come up? We had uh, two of our World War II members that uh, came up today, the stairs, to uh, show me off and my gut. Yeah, I've been, <laughs> Max is 100 years old. And uh, I'm gonna ask all of our World War II vets to come up at the end uh, for a little uh, picture, but Max is 100, Bert would have been 98 this, this week. And I called you the day after his birthday. I'm always late doing something. So we wanted to present a cake, and if I could ask for some help from somebody to uh, get the cake ready. We're gonna sing happy birthday to Bert, and Max is gonna help present the cake. But Debbie, I'm gonna ask you to do something. You gonna come over here? <laughs> We missed Max's 100th birthday, and I never give Max enough attention. So we're going to present a 100th 
Yeah, well, we got one for each. There's, so we got two cakes, one for Max for his 100th that we missed in March because of COVID. Yeah, you can. We're all going to sing happy birthday. I want, let's see, basses over here. I'm just kidding. All right, let's light the. Yeah, light them up. We're going to go down in flames. We need somebody with that. Can you lead the scene? All right, hold on. You ready? Nope, we're going to get a candle lit. We're going to have a little bit of uh, fun here. It went this high or low? Oh, right, we're really high. Here comes the keeper of fire. I can only hold one keeper of the plane. You scooch over there. I need to get you we're going to light the candle. This is Max's. Go ahead and start ground. Don't get waxed on the floor. All right, leave us off, Max. Are you all ready? This is for Bert and Max. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Display. We've got a, a glass case over in the corner by the elevator that will be set up in the next week or so. As he said, Darren's out of town right now, so you can't get that done. But um, later after the meeting or in the next week, if you want to look at it, it's going to be a really good display. Right there. So thank you, Darren. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Daryl, wherever you are. And Daryl? Oh, there he is, way up front. Um, all righty, back to Dave. You can sit down. <laughs> I promise I'll sit down soon. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, Norm. So just before I forget, I know Norm and John Roberts, who was in the 101st, our speaker. We'd like you all to come up for a picture after we do Q&A with our guest today. I just want to let you all know that uh, Nick Ventura, who came and spoke to the wing, uh, passed away. He was at Okinawa. Norm was also at Okinawa. And uh, he was a combat medic. And his service is next week. So if you're interested, let me know. Upcoming speakers. Uh, I'm hopeful that we'll have a dauntless gunner next month. I, he was going to come here today. Uh, so that was my hope. In August, we're going to have Purple Heart Month. And I've already roped in Max DeWeese, a double purple heart, 100 year old. Uh, we normally have this in February, but because of COVID, we didn't. And then in September, we've got, I, I've not met this man. His name is, uh, he served in the Air Force, John Whittenborn. I don't know how. <laughs> He's a little bit of a character, but he uh, served our country well. Sean has done his video. Sean, and we're excited back about that. And then also Trailside, where we also have speakers, is starting up next month, July. All right, if you're ready. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe to you from failing hands we throw. The torch 
be yours. We hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Field. That was written by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, who served in World War I. And our guest today, her father served in World War I. And after serving in World War I, when World War II came about, not in 1941 for us here, but 1939 across the pond, our guest today lied about her age so that she could serve her country as her father had. Let us hear the story as presented by Sean Wynn of Sally Keith Lee McCoy. Here it is. You're going to have to climb up there just to be eye level with me. I'm pretty short here. On. Now, I, prom I promised her that this would not be a speech. You were pretty adamant that you would not speak, right? Right. <laughs> but you said you would do a little Q&A. All right, so we're good for Q&A. I'm going to start off with one question, and uh, then we'll see if the crowd has a couple of questions, all right? Now, I watched the movie, and there's been a lot of talk about masks you know, masks that you would wear. So were these the kind of masks that you would wear for gas masks? These are COVID masks, right? <laughs> so um, is there something that was not in the movie that you would like to share or anything that's special that uh, working with Sean was probably a lot of fun? Uh, I, I think Sean, uh, I think Sean did everything. <laughs> so, yeah, where's the shot? All right, we've got a couple. There's Sean back there. So, would somebody have a question that they would like to ask to Brian? He's got a question. What was the biggest culture shock moving from wartime Britain, 1945? So, the question was, what was the biggest wartime shock? moving from Britain to the United States. Yes, definitely. And um, uh, it was almost like there wasn't a war over here. Um, because everything was rationed over there, and they had some rationing over here, but really nothing. <laughs> Is the food the same here? Pardon? Is the food here as good as the food back home. No, I happen to like fish and chips. <laughs> me, me too. All right. Man has a question. Do you still read Morse code? Do you still read Morse code? No. I've got one for you. He has one for you. He has a Morse code uh, book for you, so you can. So what does that mean, Norm? We love you. Uh, so he, he did Morse code, and he said, we love you with dots and dashes. So Norm served in the Pacific. All right, another question? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just finished uh, reading a book called Plants Go to War, and it's about uh, plants uh, and growing and, and that sort of thing uh, during the Second World War. I, I was very interested. I did not know that 60% of the food that came into the United Kingdom uh, prior to the war was imported. So the UK was in real trouble uh, with the submarine campaign around there. Very specific question uh, about, you mentioned rationing. Uh, I would be interested in your perspective on what we call victory gardens. Uh, and in the Pacific, U.S. forces grew much of their own food while they were out there. Did the British forces participate in cultivation uh, for providing some of their own food and rations? So what he was wondering is, 
were you all growing your own food? So we had yeah. victory gardens here. Yeah. And yeah. Is there anything? They were, uh, my father was growing all our food that we were eating. However, um, like bananas, um, they, it, it was, they were for children under two and uh, 65 year old. So I didn't have a banana for five years. <laughs> and now I have one every day. <laughs> Any other questions before we call? Yeah. Was um, in the ATS, was there like a basic training that you went through? So was there a basic training in the ATS that you went through? Did they put you through a training program? Yes. yes. Um, I went through um, a course, you know, where I had to learn the Morse code. And uh, also, uh, about three years after I was in the Army. Um, then they uh, sent me to the War Office in London, and I had to uh, learn the Hollerith machine. And the Hollerith machine is uh, a machine that uh, punches out holes in cards, and, and then they're all a secret code. And I did that for six months at the war office. Um, I loved doing the code part, but then we had to file all the cards that we punched. <laughs> so it was two weeks during the code and two weeks filing. <laughs> so I asked them if I could go back to uh, the sick board. Well, yeah, on the uh, home front, was morale always really strong? The people and uh, soldiers yeah. always really strong. Very, very strong. But then we had a good king who could have gone to Canada, but uh, he said no, his family should stay in England with the rest of the people. And um, so he, he kept the morale up. And Winston Churchill did, did he the same? And Churchill, yes, definitely. Yeah. All right, Jim? What was the uh, most important message, now that it's not classified, that you took or delivered while you were carried on, on the cyber? So what was the most important, or now that everything's declassified, was there any message that you had to deliver that was one that you remember as being one of the most important? Like no, we were all told to keep our mouths shut. <laughs> Do not talk about what you're doing. And uh, we didn't. It's <laughs> been 77 and no, I can't remember <laughs> the best one I ever had. My wife tells me to be quiet too. <laughs> That's really good. All right. So I think, oh, Dwight's got a question. Go ahead, Dwight. Did you have to learn semaphore too? Oh, no, 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 that was strictly for the Navy, I think. All right, yeah. Did you work with the Americans at all? Did you work with the Americans at all? Uh, yes, um, uh, over the wireless, and uh, uh, we would have to exchange messages. And, uh, of course, uh, I mean, uh, they were a little late coming in, you know, so <laughs> we didn't get to talk to them very often, but we met them on the streets, because <laughs> there was loads of them on the streets. Okay, so what I'd like to do next, uh, before we break for lunch, so first of all, 
uh, she did agree that she would go up in the steerman sometimes. So there's a motivation for getting it, uh, you know, up and running. So once they get the steerman up, you're going to go up in the airplane. Deal? All right. I'm other World War II veterans that are here to come up, and I'll introduce them one at a time, and we'll take a, a group picture with you all. Is that all right? Are you happy? Did you? Is this too much speaking, or did we? Okay. I think I could listen to that accent all day. All right. So, John, could I get you to come up first? Uh, that'd be great. I'm going to have John Roberts come up. John served um, Sally as you, you can stay there, just stay there. We're going to bring some more chairs up. You stay right there. Uh, yeah. So John served in the 101st Airborne. He was part of Operation Market Garden. And uh, he was at Camp Dachau as part of the Liberating Forces and helped to guard that as a uh, an American so that history could be uh, uh, sustained. So I'll have you go over and sit next to Sally, uh, if you don't mind. And then uh, did Bill Keitel make it? I don't see Bill. Bill was on the Tuxes. He was going to come up. Uh, Norm, you want to come up? Why not? We got to have a couple of Pacific guys to even things out. Norm, as you know, has served. Yeah, grab my arm, good guy. Norm, Norm served as the quartermaster of the USS Relief, and uh, Norm was part of the group that took 2,000 wounded off of Okinawa. A couple of handshakes to the guys there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Norm was uh, part of the group, the, his hospital ship picked up the uh, POWs from uh, that were uh, the Russians had them at one point, and then uh, over in uh, Japan uh, took some POWs home from there as well. And I'm not going to. Um, I don't interrupt. I'm just going to forget you, young man. Come on up. Uh, Max Deweese is 100 years old. Uh, he was not the uh, oldest guy in an event that I was at this last Saturday. At 101 year old, yeah, almost 101. Uh, Max, as you all know. Uh, he was at Guadalcanal, first offensive land, land victory. Uh, he was at uh, Saipan, Tinian, Tarawa, not in that order. And it's a lowercase w for his name. He always reminds me of that. He has if two. You make him throw up or please, I throw it in the mailbox. He throws it in the mail. So if you're going to send him a birthday card. More applications for money that way. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, John, would you take a picture of our group, and then uh, we'll give them a big round of applause. Oh. And as you all know, uh, Bert served in the European theater, and uh, and actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Dan Fednich swung for, it seems like it was maybe one of his uh, missions. I could be wrong. So. I think so. Yeah, we're going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're going to get a ride here. <laughs> hey, monkey's uncle. <laughs> here we go. This is it. Uh -oh. John, John, look over this way here. Look right here, John. Give me a big yeah, smile. There. There you go. Right there. There you go. Thank you. All right, before we have lunch, would you give him a big round of applause? I know uh, we have a presentation to Sally. Sally, I know we'll never forget you, but as a reminder of, of your time out here, <clears throat> all our good friends of the wing, we give a challenge coin to. So we'd love to present you with a challenge coin from the Heart of America Wing of the Commander of the Air Force. And thank you for coming out and sharing your story with us.
All right. Anybody else have announcements or suggestions, questions, comments? Oh, how?